Hi everybody, how are you doing? I hope you're all having a fantastic week so far. If you do not already know me, my name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to my channel. So I'm quite excited to film today because today is the second episode of the series that I have since named Rare Plant Index. If you do not know what this series is about, basically I take a type or a genus or whatever you want to call it of plant. I try and categorize these plants from anywhere between uncommon, uh, rare, very rare, extremely rare and holy. That said, this video will not feature the holy category and I did kind of um and ah about this but I actually thought I don't want to put a plant in the holy category if there isn't actually one within you know what we're talking about I actually want to keep that reserved for like really really special plants so with that said this video does not feature a holy category however it does feature I'm pretty sure the same number of plants as the philodendron video did so you're not getting any less plant for your viewing time I guess Quick disclaimer, as per usual before I start, uh, these this is just the research that I've done on the internet uh, to the best of my ability. What I might have put in a list for uncommon or rare might actually be in you know the opposite category. It does just depend on where you live in the world and how available these plants are to you. So I guess what I'm saying is don't take what I'm saying as absolute gospel. Do your research. You might find something on my list that is rare is actually much, much easier for you to get a hold of wherever you are. And during the course of this video, if I say something that's incorrect or I say that, you know, there isn't a variegated version of this plant when in actual fact there is or anything like that feel free to correct me below in the comments if you have not seen my rare plant index on philodendron that i did a week ago then feel free to watch it either before this or after this it won't really matter it's on a different type of plant so if you haven't seen it don't worry about it. So you will have already seen from the title of this video, this week we are going to cover alocasia. Now alocasia is one of my favorite types of plants. This was very difficult, can I just say. Unlike the philodendron, where there is more of a clear gradient from like uncommon to like extremely rare, alocasia don't seem to be the same. There seems to be some very common alocasia. Then there's the ones that are kind of a little bit harder to get hold of. Then after that, they're kind of all hard to get hold of, if that makes any sense. It was a struggle to actually narrow these down to the categories but I've done my best so so I'm going to do exactly what I did last time I'm going to go through these list of plants you will see pictures on the screen beside me I will do my best to describe it tell you anything I know about it but generally speaking I won't be sticking on the same plant for too long because there's a lot to get through so shall we just get into it alocasia okay there are apparently 76 species of alocasia but I'm covering around 24, 25, something like that. First plant on our uncommon category is the Alocasia stingray. Now I do actually own one of these. I bought one last summer, only a little baby, I think in like a 10 centimeter pot or something. It was tiny. It's absolutely stunning. It has kind of like a stripy speckled stem to it. And then obviously the leaves look like stingrays, hence the name. I don't think there is a variegated version of this plant at all. If there is, obviously comment and let me know but I couldn't find one on Google. I think it looks rarer than it is as well. It looks really really exotic but they're not too hard to uh, pick up so that's kind of nice. I like that. The next alocasia I think might be more of an outdoor type alocasia. I'm not really sure but this is the alocasia boa. Kind of like a corrugated kind of edge to the leaf. All green. Couldn't see a variegated one of these but it was just interesting to see that kind of shape of alocasia. I thought that was quite nice. The next plant in uncommon is the tiny dancer. Also known as a butter palm. I actually have one of these on my rare plant wish list. If you haven't seen that I will link that below. Alocasia normally characterized by a stem and then a big leaf on top of that. But these are kind of the other way around they're kind of a small leaf with a bigger stem and i just love the floaty like formation uh the way they grow i just think it's so unique next on the list we have the alocasia lauta bacchiana which to me looks a little bit like i don't know the undersides of the leaves on this one kind of remind me of calathea just because they have a very dark underside to the leaf. I couldn't find a variegated version of this online either on Google. Again, there may be one. If there is, let me know down below. Next up, another plant that is on my wish list, and that is the Alocasia renigula. <laughs> also known as the black velvet. This is very, very cute. It grows quite compact. The leaves are very, very velvety. And the veins running up the Wow, I'm losing my voice. And the veins running up the leaves are kind of white. So that's kind of nice. Also, my voice is going, guys. I'm really sorry. I'm gonna do my best to get through this without actually having to stop and go downstairs and get a drink. Anyway, moving on while I still have a voice. Next on the list is the Alocasia Maharani 
which does look quite similar to the black velvet. To me, it's kind of like a dark green version of the black velvet minus the brightly colored veins. Same kind of shape, to be honest. Yeah, it's really nice. I think, I think this alocasia can be variegated, but I'm not sure. I did find a picture on Google, which I will insert for you now, probably the one I'm looking at, and it does appear to be the same alocasia, but the fact is there weren't really many hits for it on Google, so I was like, hmm, is it or isn't it? I'm not sure. You decide. The next alocasia on the list, which is also on my wish list, um, is the alocasia dragon scale. Now this one is, this one's kind of awesome. Um, it's definitely more of a fantasy looking alocasia, I would say, if I had to describe it. It looks like something that's fresh out of Lord of the Rings. Um, if you like that kind of thing, if you like a really unique, you know, out there looking alocasia, this one could be for you. It looks to be not velvety, but not glossy. So could we just call it matte finish? So it's, yeah, it's matte finish. It's a matte finish alocasia with green and sort of darkened veins. It has texture, but it also has a pattern as well. So that's really nice. If you want to go a little bit lighter than that and a little bit more muted, but you love the idea of the dragon scale, you could probably go for the alocasia silver dragon, which is kind of similar. It's just a lot lighter, obviously more silver in color and the shading on the leaves isn't it's not quite as ornate and not quite as dark, but it's still very, very beautiful. I would consider having this, to be honest. And if you think, well, you know, the dragon scale is a little bit too in your face and the silver dragon, well, it's nice, but I still want, you know, like green. Can we have that just in green? Uh, the answer is yes. You can get something slightly similar. Obviously, it's not the same, but you can go for the alocasia clip. Piolata. I'm gonna go with Clypeolata. To me, this just looks like it's kind of a halfway point in between the two previous alocasia I've just mentioned. That concludes our uncommon category. Strap yourself in because it starts to get really good. First one in the rare category is the alocasia Cupria. This confused me a little bit actually because on the internet I can see pictures of these alocasia but they're red and some of them are green and I thought okay is this an age thing like the, uh, the leaves start out red and go to green or vice versa or are these different plants and I think the answer is they're different plants. So you can have an alocasia cupria that is red and you can have an alocasia cupria that is green. I wouldn't say these alocasia are for everyone to be honest. They're kind of alien-like. It really does depend if that's a little bit too far out for some people but it might be. If it's not too much for you I would genuinely consider it. I do feel like these are actually coming into fashion a little bit at the minute. Uh, I do know that the ginger jungle is selling these right now but they do keep going kind of in and out of stock so my voice is going. Can you hear it going? That's not good. God, we've got like 20 more plants to get through. Okay, so this one's good. The next one on the rare list is the Alocasia Zebrina. And I have one of these and it's right here. That's why it is here. I'll see if I can just plop this down. It's got a new baby coming out, by the way. How awesome is that? But this alocasia gets its name from its stems. It has, well, zebra-like stems, I suppose, and very, if I can turn it, arrowy kind of leaves. This isn't me flexing, by the way, to say, oh, I've got a rare alocasia. It was more of the fact it was just here. So I thought I'd pick it up and show you because there's no point in not. So yes, that is totally not me flexing at all. What I would flex about, however, is the fact that this alocasia comes in a variegated version and I will put a picture on the screen right now but oh my God, it's really pretty. But it's very, very beautiful. It's it's reasonably, it's kind of like, it's minimal, but it does have a little something about it, if that makes sense. It's a really nice one, to be honest. Our next one on our rare list is the Alocasia, Trang the Alocasia Triangularis. I mean, it's basically a plant full of triangles with little ruffles on it. It's nothing, you know, entirely special, but it is very unique. Alocasia aren't usually this shape at all. It is nice. I don't necessarily think it's for me. There is another alocasia further down the list that I would much rather have. You're in for a treat, trust me. The next alocasia on the list in rare is the alocasia fry deck. This is quite nice, actually. I would, I would own this. Again, it is quite minimal, uh, dark green leaf with white veining. I think it's velvety. Cannot confirm. I could be very wrong there. It looks velvety, but I'm not 100%. So there is supposedly a variegated version of this. I'm not 100%. To me, the shape looks a little bit different. The one I'm looking at here just doesn't look, the, the leaf doesn't look as long. So I'm very, very skeptical. I will include the image for you and you can decide for yourself. I, you know what it is? I would rather have the normal fry deck over this variegated one. I don't really know why. I just really like how striking the original is. I don't actually think if I was given the choice, I wouldn't opt for a variegated version of this. I'm just gonna be honest. Moving on, we have the Alocasia Sarayan. Sarayan. It reminds me of the Frydeck, 
only I think that's definitely not velvety and I think these plants can grow like pretty large. I think they're supposed to be more of a garden plant. I'm sure you could have one in the house. I'm sure you could have a lot of these other ones out of the house. You know, I don't think it necessarily matters, but that's a very pretty one as well. So the next one, I have a little treat for you guys. If you like your philodendron pink princess or you like your um, Calathea trio star that you may just see in the frame behind me there, if you like anything like that, green and pink, why don't you try the Alocasia pink dragon? Now this is pretty sexy can't lie. It's kind of got leaves reminiscent of the fry deck in terms of the colours. The shape is uh, different though, it's much more smoother. And obviously the star of the show in this case is the pink stems. That's quite pretty, I'm not gonna lie. If I saw that, I would definitely pick that up, probably regardless of price. It's a real standout alocasia for me, that one. I really, really like that. Again, not sure if it has a variegated version. I couldn't find one. If you do, obviously let me know. Uh, and that, I think that is it for the rare category. Right, next up, very rare category. And the first alocasia we have in this category is the alocasia zebrina reticulata. So think of a zebrina, same as this, but the leaves are, I would say, longer and thinner and the leaf pattern, ew, my God, it is so beautiful and ornate. I think that's what sets it apart from the zebrina. If I had the choice between the alocasia zebrina, the regular one and the reticulata, I would probably go for the reticulata. Those leaves are just insane. I couldn't see anything about variegation on the internet. Doesn't mean to say it doesn't exist, it just means I haven't found it. Um, I don't know whether I will have included a picture including the stems on this one. I'm just staring at a leaf right now, but I can guarantee you that the uh, these stems are the same as a Sabrina. So that's very, very pretty. Okay, next one on the list. It's kind of two in one. I thought I would include this for all the uh, variegated Monstera lovers out there because this is the Alocasia alternative to the variegated Monstera. So this is the Alocasia Macoriza variegata or the Alocasia odora variegata. Now I'm including these both in the same category because it is so hard to tell the difference. And when I was looking at images of this on Google, I genuinely wasn't sure which one I was looking at, but they both seem to look very similar. So I wanted to kind of include them in the same bracket. There was no point making them separate. But as you can probably tell by the image, this very much reminds me of the Monstera Albo Borzigiana. It's just beautiful, really big patches of white variegation like that, that. If I ever find that, I'm, I'm owning that. Either one, the Odora or the Macariza, it doesn't really matter. But as I said, I wanted to include this for all you um, variegated Monstera lovers out there, because if you want to get into Alocasia, that's probably a good place to start. Next on the list, changing it up a little bit, is the Alocasia Reversa. So this one looks... <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but it's very, it looks like it grows very, very low and it has very, very long lance, like almondy shaped leaves. It is very pretty, I cannot lie. Um, this does seem to be very, very rare. It reminds me a little bit of the Silver Dragon, only a little bit darker in color, just in terms of the patterning there, nothing else. Yeah, it's quite a nice one. I don't know if I will ever come across that in a shop. I do feel that that is really quite rare. Oh, oh, moving down the list. Mm. We have the Alocasia Nebula Imperialis. Alocasia Nebula Imperialis. Now, I'm gonna get onto this in a second because I found a Nebula Imperialis and an Imperialis, and I don't know if they're the same plant or not. I'm just gonna briefly cover the Nebula Imperialis first, and then we'll do the next one, and then you can kind of decide if it's the same plant, because I wasn't really sure. But this is the Alocasia Nebula Imperialis, apparently. Really, really similar shade range to the Reversa. It's, it's unique, I've gotta give it that. It's it's much, much wider and larger leaves. It looks like it can grow much larger actually than some of the others. Beautiful, beautiful silvery, dark looking leaf. It looks to be a matte finish on this one. Don't think it's velvety, it just looks matte to me. It definitely doesn't look glossy, which is something to note, but it's, it's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. I don't know when I'll ever see one of those, but that is very beautiful. So to follow that, we have the Alocasia Imperialis, apparently. <laughs> This one, as you'll see, is very, very different from the previous one. This one is, well, it looks to be all black. It looks like the new growth is green and then it changes to a black, but the leaves on this one seem to be glossy, um, unless somebody has literally just wet the leaves there. They may have, you know, I really can't tell very well on my tablet, but that might just be wet leaves. So take what I'm about to say with a pinch of salt, but the leaves look to be glossy to me. Yeah, both of them, I would have either. If I had to choose one, it's probably, assuming these plants are what we think they are, 
probably the imperialist. If Batman owned an alocasia, that would be the alocasia. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that's the bat alocasia. And that concludes the very rare category, which means because we have no holy category this week, we only have one category of alocasia left. Right, last category, extremely rare. To start the extremely rare category, we have the alocasia scalprum. A lot of the pictures I saw of this, and that's not to say you can't acquire it, a lot of the pictures I saw of this were actually the alocasia in the wild, which is normally a good sign if we're looking for extremely rare. But this one is very, very nice. It grows in a similar way, I think, to the the reverser, just in the fact that it grows, I don't know, low to the ground. What would you call it? I want to say it's like stealthy. Does that make any sense? Like a stealthy growth. Um, but this is long, thin, green, really intricate pattern on the leaves, to be honest. It almost looks blue-green. I don't know how true that is to reality or if it's just the image. I'm not entirely sure, but it looks, it looks nice. I've written in my notes quite stealthy, so. <laughs> the next plant on the extremely rare list is the Alocasia heterophilia. This was difficult, okay? And I will be honest, I'm not sure if the picture that I'm about to show you is in fact an alocasia heterophilia. I've probably uh, cropped the image down, but it did have the tile of the plant underneath it as part of the image. But if you Google this plant, you will get a ton of different types. That could be true. There could be loads of different types of this. This isn't just the one type of alocasia. I'm not 100%. But the one I'm looking at is really something else. It's like a silver, like iridescent blue, gray, kind of color. It's a similar shape to the reticulata. In fact, it looks very similar to the reticulata, only a bluey silver. Next plant on the list is the Alocasia venusta, which looks a lot, <laughs> a lot like the Alocasia reversa, like a lot. Part of me is so skeptical for that reason alone. It does look a little bit more green than the reversa, to be honest. The reversa, I would say, has more of a silvery kind of tone to it. Right, last one in extremely rare, and I did save the best for last. Okay, this is the Alocasia Loco. It may have other names, I don't know, but literally, like, what even happened here? What happened? This, to me, obviously the most common Alocasia most people have in their house is the Alocasia Amazonica, I think it is, or it's the Alocasia Poly. They could be the same plant but this is kind of like the Alocasia Amazonica just dressed up for Halloween. That's what's happened. They remind me, the little leaves remind me of witch's hat. It's kind of similar to the Triangularis. That is why I wanted to put it in earlier. Um, just so you kind of were familiar with this different leaf pattern and how uncommon it is, I guess. Like, who made this? Where did this come from? This is the most unique Alocasia I have ever seen. I am way keen on finding this. If anyone knows of where to get one or plot twist, they're actually super common. Uh, let me know. And I think, according to my list, guys, that is it, which brings us to the end of our video. I'm very, very sorry that I could not cover all types of alocasia. Even just covering 76 would be like a 40 minute video. To be honest, while we are on the subject, if you think you know what I can handle a longer video on this sort of stuff, on this series in general, then do let me know. And I will not be afraid to go to like a 20 minute edit on it. I'm just, I'm scared of making videos that are too long and people can't sit through them. So do let me know if you're happy with the length of them or you want them made longer or shorter and I will do my best. I think I would struggle to make them shorter, I'll be honest, just because I'm going through these plants pretty quickly as it is, but I can always try, so please let me know what you think about that. If there are any other types of plants you would like to see me do one of these videos on, please do not hesitate to write them in the comments. So thank you very much for watching this video. Believe me, I actually find this quite fun. I think it's fun to sit and research a type of plant, find out what's rare, find out what isn't, just find all these weird and wonderful things I haven't seen before. It's genuinely a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun. Thank you very, very much for watching this episode of Rare Plant Index. I have been your host and I've enjoyed myself immensely. So thank you very, very much for watching and no doubt I will see you in the next one. Bye.